besieged by horrors across the stars as well as the demonic, humanity could not prosper. Their fall during the age of strife led to countless deaths, hopelessness, and a fractured civilization. And then a golden light shone across the darkness. Hope came in the form of one man, the Emperor. The almost impossible task of reclaiming Terra from the techno-barbarian warlords, as well as unifying all human worlds, would require a massive army, amongst many other things. No one man alone could accomplish such a feat, and for many editions of Warhammer 40k, it seemed that besides Malkador, the Emperor could and did do it all. But the Emperor is not omnipotent. He is not all-knowing. He is not perfect. He is flawed. He is not a god, at least not yet. And thus, he did have help. If we look between the pages of the novel Saturnine, as well as the Warhawk, we are introduced into a major player in the creation of the Primarchs, a perpetual by the name of Erda, the mother of Primarchs. What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today we're here to talk about Warhammer 40k, or I guess in this matter, Warhammer 30k, as we dive into the lore of some pretty crazy stuff, uh, Erda, the mother of Primarch. So like I was saying earlier, for the longest time we thought that the Emperor created the Primarchs through his genetics alone. However, that is not the case. He did have some help, and in this 40 Facts video, we are going to look at all the information we have from this new character, Erda. So without further ado, let's dive right in. During the war to reclaim Terra from the techno-barbarian warlords, the Emperor, or Neoth as he was known at that time, rose to power as a king via allying with many perpetuals. These undying beings were a strong asset towards the Emperor's goal, but as fate would have it, all but a few would leave him for one reason or another. The perpetual Erda stayed for her adoration of the Emperor alongside Malkador the Sigilite and another known simply as Astarte. Disaffection grew amongst our kin. Even the best of us could barely keep up and I think he resented that. He is quite ruthless, and he is astoundingly arrogant. I suppose it would be hard not to be if you were him. He was always right. He never looked for advice or counsel. He reshaped the world and drove it forward, and he would not be questioned on the merit of his plan. To do so was heresy. Most of us divorced ourselves from his efforts. He was taking risks, one by one. Perpetuals aligned to him slipped away. He was glad to see the backs of them, I think. He was tired of their objection, weary of their caution. He wanted results. He became angry with the minds that could not match his speed of thought and his genius. So, most of us left him. They went away into other lives, or went into hiding, or left the homeworld. A few stayed. The Sigilite, of course. He was always married to the cause. In an effort to circumvent this loss of manpower, the Emperor began the Primarch Project. A plan to artificially create 20 loyal warriors was sent into motion. Erda, alongside Astarte, helped create these demigods, but even with their genetic expertise, the Emperor could not finish the Primarchs as he intended. He needed a particular set of gene stock, Erda's genes, and so the Emperor combined his own genes with that of Erda, and thus the Primarchs were born. The father, the Emperor, and the mother, Erda, had created their children, the twenty Primarchs. Even though Erda and Neoth birthed the Perpetuals into existence, they each had a different plan for them. The Emperor needed the ultimate soldier to force humanity's evolution, but Erda wanted the Primarchs to become more human and less like tools to be discarded after their use. 
In an effort to save the Primarchs, and in return save humanity, Erda unknowingly became the conduit of the Chaos Gods, and caused the warp tear that flung the Primarchs across the galaxy. After this massive blow to the Emperor's plans, she fled and cast herself into exile. Angered at this betrayal, the Emperor chose to simply move on and not punish her, even after finding her whereabouts. Could this be due to love? Was there something more going on between these two perpetuals? Only one can assume. Years later, during the end of the Siege of Terra, Erda was approached by an Astarte of the Word Bearers, Erebus. This chaotic marine came after Erda's power through joining Chaos. She refused, and Erebus had no choice but to force her, and so he summoned forth four greater demons of Chaos, each one pertaining to the one of the four Chaos Gods. This would normally be considered overkill, but let's not forget that Erda is the second strongest perpetual after that of the Emperor of Mankind. And as the four demons stood before her small, fragile frame, Erda's body began to split into three beings. The first was an older human, capable of freezing anything she touched in place. The second was a young woman, wielding a staff and radiating a strong psychic presence. And the final was a little girl, clutching a bloody scythe. The battle was indeed an epic one, as the four demons attempted to massacre the three women. A whirlwind of psychic energy emanated from the battle. But by the end of it all, Erda triumphed. She was exhausted and in a weakened state when Erebus came up to her, placing his anathame blade to her neck. Even against a perpetual, a lethal blow from this weapon meant certain death. Once again, Erebus asked her to join Chaos, but this time her response was a mouthful of bloody spit across his face. The last thing she heard was the frustrated yells of Erebus saying, Worship me! And just as quickly as she was introduced, Erda met her end. With that being said, I want to know what your thoughts are on this new character. She has a lot to do with a lot of things in 40k. Um, there is a little bit there that I didn't mention that she actually talks to a lot of the other perpetuals in the story, such as John Grammaticus and uh, Olanis Pius, and she puts a lot of things into motion, and it's just crazy how, like, for so many editions of 40k, she wasn't brought up, because obviously she wasn't a thing. And with these novels, we get to learn more about the intricacies of the heresy, the Great Crusade, the creation of the Primarchs, and we now know that the Emperor didn't just create the Primarchs completely through his genetic prowess, he actually made it alongside Erda, a Perpetual, the second strongest Perpetual at that. And that's crazy to think that I mean, where the Emperor is looked at as a god since all of his crazy feats that he's capable of, such as subduing an uncharted Catan, um, making treaties with the Mechanicus, and just everything that he was able to do, smiting Horus in one attack. Like, Erda, she's right behind him. So in all senses of, you know, of the word, she is a goddess. Um, so that's just crazy that such a major character has just been added to the 40k, you know, universe. And I just want to get your guys' thoughts and opinions on Erda. Like, do you like it? Do you think she was just shoehorned in here? Um, the thing I don't like about this is that she kind of just came out of nowhere and then she's dead. <laughs> so it's like, if you had any questions, any ideas, anything like that, it's... It's... It's kind of like we'll, we'll never get those answered because, I mean, her story's over. The other thing, too, is this kind of humanizes the Emperor even more so, where he's not just like this all-powerful god. Um, he does have flaws, as we've seen time and time again, with the Emperor keeping secrets from his sons, 
and we now know that it wasn't chaos 100% that you know flung them into the various corners of the galaxy and had their way with the Primarchs it was Arda and she had good reasoning towards doing so because where the Emperor wanted the Primarchs to be kind of like the Astartes a tool towards a means of an end um, to be discarded after use kind of like what the Thunder Warriors were she saw them as kind of children really like she wanted them to live their lives and still usher humanity towards the next step in evolution uh, homo superiors as she called it which surprisingly is the same term that magneto used with like the x-men whereas yes they're mutants but they're homo superior they're better they're stronger than humans and um, they were seen as the next step of evolution so that was pretty cool and then also like was the emperor in love with urda like were they together maybe because i mean they're perpetuals so they've been along for a long long time and living life maybe they had a thing or two or something and i mean the whole creation of the primarchs must have meant something to the both of them perhaps continuing on with that like her being the second strongest perpetual is pretty badass because honestly like we saw her take on four greater demons of chaos now that is not a feat to just simply overlook because when you think about it space marines struggle to take on one chances are they can't do it um gray knights with much difficulty can take out a greater demon and of course primarchs can barely take out one greater demon as we've seen with the whole rivalry between ka banda and sanguinius so urda taking on four of them and coming out on top just shows you how strong she is and that also kind of scales us as to how strong the emperor is probably in his prime he could have taken on all four of those greater demons i mean with slight difficulty i'd say because where she kind of struggled to do it we have saw her that she was at a very weakened state to where she couldn't defend herself against erebus um we know that the emperor took out horus who was empowered by all four of the chaos gods so again that kind of shows you the strength of the emperor as well as urda and lastly the last thing i want to talk about is that perhaps she must have done something some tempering with maybe the second and the 11th primark to make them do whatever it is they did that allowed the emperor to rid them from his um great crusade like the edict of obliteration completely erased them from existence uh, maybe that was arda's doing maybe she had some type of fail safe implanted into these two um you know primarchs and maybe that's why they're lost and forgotten um maybe they're out there still alive looking for her or trying to resurrect her in some way and also maybe that means that one or both of these primarchs were female since obviously you can't have 20 primarchs being all male when half of that was urda's genetics also impl implemented into the mix so perhaps we do have a reason a way to get female space marines shocker right <laughs> so a lot of things to talk about a lot of things to think about um i really want to get to know your guys's thoughts down below so let's keep the discussion going let's keep the conversation going let me know your thoughts on urda the mother of primarchs the second strongest perpetual and i'll see you in the comments thanks again for listening guys if you do like what we do here hit that like button subscribe because we keep putting out 40k videos each and every day and if you guys want to go that extra mile we do have a patreon page where you guys can pledge a simple dollar a month and that really helps us in giving you guys these videos so you know if not i understand <laughs> share like the video and i'll see you in the next one this has been the silent alchemist part of one mind syndicate and i'll catch you then peace Oh, <laughs>